Oh, hi guys, um, in this video I'm going to try and demonstrate Fred Carl's um, HDX um, server system and uh, in particular I'm going to, s going to demonstrate um, using the same set of files on the 4A console and on um, Classic 99 emulator um, uh, I don't mean transferring files, for example, from the 4A to the PC, uh, converting them uh, and then transferring them back. I mean the same physical files which will be hosted uh, on the PC. So what we've got here is a fairly stock TI system. Um, the only special things about it is it has um, a SID99 card in there and it also has a modified RS-232, TI RS-232 card with the uh, Fred Carl HDX modification. I'll show you the card uh, a little bit later, but you can, you can see um, pictures of the cards on Fred's website. So what we've got, we've got my trusty old aging uh, Tecra laptop, uh, which I which I used to go up to the fourth with uh, and uh, under Classic 99 and um, and just the 4A uh, you can possibly see down there um, that's the serial connection which runs down the back of the PEB to the RS-232 card so what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to use Classic 99 to create a file uh, with Classic 99 and um, I'm then going to manipulate that file on the 4A but we won't be transferring it using a uh, you know a, um, a X modem type file transfer program the file will remain on the PC and um, the HDX server program serves the file from the PC to the TI uh, I'll demonstrate um, what I've done I've set Classic 99 up such that disk 3 is is a FIAD as normal but it uses V99 file types only um, TI files has been disabled and uh, the reason for that is that the HDX system uses V99 format files so by forcing this drive um, to be um, V99 format obviously any files created uh, using Classic 99 and saved into this folder into D DSK3 rather uh, will be uh, saved in V99 format so they'll be compatible with the HDX system with, without any further um, conversion or anything at all being required so what I'm going to do um, I'm going to uh, use TurboForce you didn't expect anything else did you? and what I'll do I'll make a, a blocks file code in fourth lives in blocks files I'll make one on DSK3 Just make a 10k file for now. So that's done, and you'll see there's the file there. It's uh, it's turned up in the in Classic 99's DSK3 folder. Now we'll tell Tibberfall to use that to file. Okay. So Turbo 4 is now connected to the blocks file on DSK3. The blocks file is a DF128 file. So now I'm going to, I'm going to put some code in block 2, just to be different. So I'll just write a little, whoops, i just write a little test program here. Let's say 100, 0, 
do that I loop. Something like that. See a little see a little demonstration. We flush that. So it's now out of the cache uh, uh, inside two uh, two has a has a six k cache. It's now that block has now been written back to disk, and we can load it and make sure it works. And there it is. So we've demonstrated, you know, not, nothing particularly special there. Um, but we've we we the point is. Uh, we've created a file using Classic 99. Uh, now what we're going to do is manipulate that file on the TI. So I'm going to close Classic 99, and I'm going to launch. Uh, if I can find it, HDX server. Now I've set up the TI-99 files option to point to Classic 99's DSK3 folder. Okay, so all files um, read and saved will, will go to and from that folder, Classic 99 DSK3. You see it uh, you can maybe see it says TI-99 HDX started. It's actually waiting now for the TI to come alive. Uh, the whole thing is, is powered down at the moment. So I'll we'll switch the monitor on. Switch the PB on. And switch the console on. There we go, we're running uh, Tuber 1.0 uh, on the console. You can now see that uh, HDX server has spotted the fact that the TI is up. What's happened there is that the PA, uh, the uh, when the console was powered up, the DSR on the RS-232 card, uh, the HDX DSR, ran and initiated communication with the PC. So the two of them have now handshaked. And um, and they're ready to rock. So, using TurboForce on the TI, um, what we're going to do is I'll just uh, I'll just I might as well just let it uh, boot, boot from floppy there. It's, it's, it's just got some utilities that it that it loads. Okay. Um, what we're going to do we're going to tell the TI to use uh, its blocks files on the HDX1. So we say uh, HDX1 dot blocks use. Okay, Turbo Fourth is now connected to um, the blocks file, which is in Classic 99's DSK3 folder because that's how we configured HDX server. So if I do a to list, press enter, you'll see some activity on HDX server as it serves the contents, um, or, or more specifically, the individual records uh, that I've, that Turboforth is requesting. There you go, there's the data. And there is the contents of the file served um, by HDX server directly to the TI with no conversions or intermediate steps it's just going through a cable so we can just go ahead and edit that because what I'd like to do is I would like to to prove that it can do both ways around I'd like to change that to a 200 using the console okay so we, we come out of there we flush that block back to disk, so you should see something on here. There you go. That's the record or the block rather written back to uh, to HDX, and and consequently to that file there. And n now I can 
I'll close HDX server and relaunch Classic 99 on the laptop. I'm going to tell it to use disk three dot blocks. And then I'll list block two. And voila, the contents of the file have changed because they were saved um, back to the PC's hard disk from the console. So it's important to realize that clearly both um, both systems can use the same, the physically the same file. Uh, which is really handy because you can develop code on your on your laptop on your PC using Classic 99 with all the the um, comforts and extra facilities that it gives you, such as the debugger and the convenience of using the PC platform. And you can test it uh, using uh, a real console uh, just by hooking up a serial cable. No transferring of files. No messing around with TI files headers, stripping headers off, no having to wrap things up with Archiver and unarchive them at the other end, nothing. Just put the two machines next to one another and serve the file straight off your PC. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I think what I'll do uh, next is, uh, is pull the top off the PEB and you can just have a quick look at the card. So. Uh, Give me a second while I take this down. Console off, monitor off. Let's see, that's the serial cable. The serial cable is just a um, null modem cable which I bought from Maplins uh, in America it would be Radio Shack or whatever uh, right try not to uh, destroy try not to destroy anything here would help if I turn the PB off So what you've got inside my machine at the moment is flex cable interface, SID99, weird Grom Gram um, homemade jobby thing, which does work. Um, you, if you flip the switch and put the power on, it takes over the machine, gives you menus and stuff, and it does stuff. Uh, disk controller here, and hiding down there, which you can just about see, is my SAMS card. Um, Turboforth 1.0 doesn't find it, but Turboforth 1.1 does. And here is the piece de resistance, the, uh, the, the modified... RS232 card, and that's what it looks like. We've got an 8K RAM here. The RAM um, it basically takes the place of uh, an EEPROM, and it means that um, if Fred updates the DSR, um, you can simply download it from his website and uh, upload it straight onto the card um, and change the functionality of the HDX system. Uh, obviously because it's a, a RAM chip you have a battery backed um, facility to maintain the uh, the contents of the RAM and I have to say it's worked faultlessly since I've had it. What we've got here is a simple a simple Y RS-232, that's RS-232-1 which retains its original functionality. Okay and this down here is RS-232-2 which goes off to the serial cable um, to the null mode cable and off to the laptop um, and RS-232-2 is, is, is reserved for HDX use um, 
the software that runs on the PC end of this can be used with the Nano PEB and with the CF7 Plus or whatever it's called. Um, so there are, you don't necessarily have to get uh, your your RS-232 card modified. Although I, I wanted to, I, I I really wanted to have the modification done. Um, there's also a possibility of having a custom board made which would fit straight into the PEB and have a 16550 UART on there which would give us a much um, faster transfer speeds. This runs a 38,400 board or bits per second um, which is faster than the floppy drives. It's about 35% I worked out faster than a floppy drive which is, uh, you know, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, it, given the size of files that we tend to deal with um, on the TI, um, the board rate is actually fast enough. Um, although 115k would make this seriously quick, it would be like using a hard drive, um, but without all the mechanical issues of running old legacy hard disks. Um, and legacy hard disk controllers. Um, the HDX system does support subdirectories um, and the DM2K software, also written by Fred, um, does support the HDX board. Okay, I think that's about all I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show that it's possible to host all of your TI files on your PC you no longer really need, you don't need disk drives. Um, they're a thing of the past. You can archive all your files onto your PC, simply use the HDX card, and you only need one copy of your files in one place on your laptop, and you can use them both on the, f on the real console and in emulation. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little demo, and um, I hope um, it, it will um, prompt some of you to contact Fred, perhaps with a view to getting one of these uh, one of these cars set up yourself. It's uh, it's a great system, and I think it deserves to uh, to be used widely and, and and be successful. Also, hats off to Mike, uh, or should I say, Tercy, um, for his brilliant work with Classic 99. Okay, thanks all. Take care.